Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another book review on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at a new book from Steve Houghton. You may recall his first book, The British Sniper, A Century of Evolution, covering well, British sniper uh, rifles and equipment from World War I through to the present day. Well, I, it was very cool. I had the chance to do some filming with Mr. Houghton when he was in the final stages of this book, and even back then uh, he had mentioned that what he really wanted to do was, when that was finished, publish a second book entirely devoted to the story of the L96A1. And that is what he has now done with the Green Mini, the L96A1. This rifle is was really a paradigm shift for the British military, going from the traditional sort of gunsmith's art of a woodstock bedded Float bedded rifle, uh, and transitioning to a modern chassis based rifle where all the components are modular, and if something goes wrong you pull one part off, replace it with a new part, and you're good to go, instead of having to pack the whole gun up and ship it off to an armorer for repair. So what we have here is a 280 page book that covers not just the history of the L96A1, which is also, I should say, more or less the history of Accuracy International, because that company essentially formed around the L96A1. It's this fantastic story of essentially three British guys in a shed who develop a fantastic bench rest accurate but militarily durable precision rifle. And they first sell it to the SAS, and then they sell it to the Special Boat Service, and then they decide to enter it in British military trials when the British decide to replace the L42A1, which was essentially just a, an updated or upgraded scoped Lee Enfield. Um, they decide to enter their, their PM, their precision marksman rifle, in the British military trials so that the military can go out and do all this harsh testing on it, find out what was wrong with the rifle, reject them from the competition for you know whatever reason, but obviously they weren't going to win it, there were three guys in a shed, but they'd get some good insight onto how to make their rifle better. Well, short version of the story, they end up winning the trials, uh, and now they kind of have to put together a company and figure out how to make over a thousand of these rifles to become the standard sniper rifle of the British military. Uh, so all the details of that are in here, and I think it's a tremendously cool story. Um, a lot of the highs and lows, the pitfalls, what happens when you go from designing a one-off rifle uh, for a, basically for an internationally renowned competitive marksman, that would be Malcolm Cooper, who was one of the three uh, guys who founded essentially Accuracy International. Uh, but then you know, what happens when you have to go into mass production and subcontracting? And it's a story that I think is really relevant across all military firearms, because the problems that they have with the L96, and recognize that this is a fantastic rifle to begin with, it wasn't a gun that needed to be fixed, but inevitably problems happened, and this is the story of how they got through those problems. And then beyond that, it is also a story of the modern history of the L96, and it covers all of the gear around the rifle. So it covers the scopes, there was a midlife update package that introduced a bunch of new equipment for the L96, uh, thermal systems, uh, night vision systems. This goes into the actual clothing that was issued to snipers alongside the L96. Uh, it also talks about some of the other Accuracy International rifles that were developed uh, after the L96, which were all essentially based on this original rifle, uh, and those rifles service in the British military. There is a tremendous amount of first-hand information here. The foreword is actually written by Dave Walls, who is one of the other co-founders of Accuracy International, and you can tell that a lot of the information that Steve has in this book came directly from the people who were in the trenches designing the gun, doing all the work at the time. So it's a fantastic uh, assembly of first-hand information. Uh, and on top of that, there are also a whole bunch of first-hand accounts from British soldiers who used these rifles in a variety of conflicts, from Northern Ireland to Kosovo, Bosnia. Uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. So I, overall what we have here is a book that is everything essentially that you ever wanted to know about the L96A1. I think it is very well researched, I think it is very well documented. Um, if I had one complaint about the book, one thing that could be improved, um, some of the writing I think could be made a little bit more engaging. The facts are certainly there, and it's a tremendously cool story, but it does require you to be interested in the rifle to begin with. I think. Um, but that shouldn't be taken as too harsh of a criticism, because this is a fantastic reference book. And uh, 
if you are interested in rifle manufacture or the L96, or British military small arms in general, I would highly recommend it. I think, as I said, there's a lot in here that is somewhat universal to all firearms manufacturing, and being able to see this story from as close to the original guy's point of view as Houghton makes it in here um, is a rare opportunity, and it's something that can shed some light on a lot of other elements of firearms history. No. Um, as of the... well, I will have a link to the publisher's website here as well as Amazon, so check it out. Hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.